Republican Elaine Chao is finally snapping back at Trump after he made remarks about her and her family a few months ago. She did wait a long time. However, uh, this does raise a lot of questions, David. Yeah, this is going super viral right now. I'm not saying amongst 20 or 30 year olds, Andrew, but there are hundreds of thousands of comments on every single post about Elaine Chao sort of half firing back at Trump. Now, I do want to be honest, guys, we are not a political pundit channel. However, we are talking about this because she is Asian. This is viral news and she is a very powerful Asian person. Whether or not you agree with how she rose up to power, you agree with her politics or who her husband is, I'm just saying... She is a fully Asian woman that is very powerful in America. I'm just saying Coco Chow was hiding uh, her family's dealings with China, along with uh. the Joe Biden secret documents in Chinatown, along uh. with Yunkin, who also sounds Chinese. I'm just saying there's a lot of China involved in yeah. a lot of things. <laughs> So those were amongst the amongst the non-verbatim quote that Trump had about her family a few months ago that was offensive. And at that time, when because real quick background, Elaine Chao is President Trump's former Secretary of Transportation, right? And she is married to Mitch McConnell, who is a very powerful man himself, or married to whatever I don't know. But uh, and then so basically, she when when she first heard the remarks a few months back, she was like, you know, I just hope that the media does not. Repeat those things. Those are hurtful. And then that's all she said. She played it soft. And then now she's kind of being like, well, those comments say a lot more about him than they do say about Asian Americans. Hmm. Yeah, I would say it's really interesting if you listen to Elaine Chow talk because she kind of talks like Bruce Lee because she has that like 1960s syntax that like never got updated, but almost like, a, you know, it's a very rural, uh, royal formal way of speaking English. Right, right. But David, I guess the main questions here and... Uh, the main questions are about assimilation here because right. we're not debating Elaine Chow, guys, by the way. Uh, yeah, herself. I mean, real quick, if you guys want to get into the politics of it, Trump, he kind of pops off like a middle schooler or like a rich drunk yeah. uncle, right? And Elaine Chow's family does have a shipping empire in New York State that possibly does do some business with China. Right. However, there was an independent investigation and she was like cleared of all like tiers of uh, conflict of interest. Right, right, right. Um, although I'm sure by no, all, by no doubt in my mind does she use her political position to also yeah. help her family get more I think more a lot rich. of politicians, including her, operate in the gray yes. zone to enrich themselves, but they try, they go through great lengths to conceal it. And like I said, a lot of times when like politicians are dissing each other, Andrew, that you say something about me that's three out of 10 true, so there's some truth to it, but not fully. And I say something about you that's four out of 10 true, do I went out because my accusation mm -hmm. was four out of 10 true or since they were both below five or six, they're both false. Yeah. And you know what? To be a little bit empathetic on Elaine Chow right now, I will say she did stand by Trump when she was working for him back even in 2017 when Trump was going at her husband, Mitch McConnell, and criticizing him, but she was working for Trump. She goes, you know, I will stand by my men, both my men. <laughs> Cringe, Yo, cringe, man. but she was standing by him. It, it's super cringe quote, but. <laughs> well, I'm glad that she said that because uh, Coco Chow was great so, for those times until she turned on me. Now she's a traitor. <laughs> um, I would say that a lot of Asian Americans, man, from what I know, there there's definitely not that much positive feelings around Elaine Chow, especially if you're leaning more left. But I do know a few like rich Taiwanese guys who low key give her props, but they would like never come out and publicly admit that due to yeah. obviously Asians needing to be more politically neutral or on the left right but it's yeah it's always a conversation like as an asian do you want to cheer on any asian who does achieve a high position whether or not they're for your side or the other why side? why not she climbed the ladder it's a difficult ladder to climb what yeah. you, you're saying you can't climb the red ladder you only got to climb the blue ladder wait if you're against elaine chow let me tell you this you're against the american dream she came here as an immigrant from taiwan at eight she didn't even know english and look where she's at yeah i mean honestly if we were to really break it down i do think this has to do with assimilation and what i guess socioeconomic stats or social class does your family envision you assimilating into mm. right like we said elaine chow is from a very prestigious family in taiwan their parents you know did very good business became wealthy in America. Obviously, she went to Harvard. She wants to enter the halls of American power, Andrew, that are very, very seldomly touched by, until recently, by minorities. Yeah, and especially during that time, it's not like the the power was in the Asian student organization back at Harvard, you right. know? It's like, if you wanted to move up at that time, I think she's like 69 years old or 70 years old now, it's almost like you were just 
just with the mainstream system, you know? Right. The mainstream so, system, which is probably you know, the Anglo-Saxons, right? Exactly, they still you know? rule a lot of power in America, like way more than other people who are not Anglo. I mean, I would say this. It's just very interesting to me when I watch like things like politicians or possibly even Hollywood, Andrew, the amount of assimilation that goes into it. Because Bobby Jindal was a Hindu Indian who had a different name and he converted to an American name and became a Christian. However, Bobby Jindal still had the Indian wife and family, but then he takes his Indian kids like hunting all the time with shotguns. That's an interesting photo. You do not think that a Hindu guy or formerly Hindu guy is going to take his kid hunting in Louisiana. I, I'll tell you this, man, that man is trying very hard to be a Louisiana. Right. <laughs> because I will say it always shocked me that he was the governor of Louisiana. But That's it's crazy. even true um, for the guy politician. Andrew, there was this guy, Alan Fung, who recently, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of people thought he was our cousin that he was running for what the Senate, Rhode Island, uh, Rhode Island. He has a white wife. Yeah. Yeah, so some of the Asian guys do have white wives, and I'm not saying they do that for political reasons, but obviously a guy who's marrying a non-Asian, like an American It's rare. Person, Statistically, it's yeah, like very rare it's for Chinese rare, guys. But it also goes to show you that type of mindset that you probably have. Just like a lot of the other uh, ethnic um, politician women that are very powerful, like AOC or uh, Ilhan Omar, they're actually currently right now with white guys. Right. And, and they're I would like, say that white people would be like, you know, that's real interesting because I thought they were anti-white. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> no, no, for sure. But we got to shout out to Judy Chu, Grace Meng, Tulsi Gabbard, all these other people who, who are uh, Asian women who are with Like I said, <laughs> we're not guys. like saying it's good or bad. You could be in a good or bad marriage with whoever yeah. you're dating, by the way. It's just like interesting to point out because it is a point about assimilation and entering the halls of power in a place where a lot of people who look like you don't have a lot of power. My question my big question is if you see these politicians and maybe we're not going to point out elaine chow exactly you know everybody's case is a little bit different but do you need these like politician sellouts for progress do you need sellouts and for by progress? the way we're not calling them sellouts yeah. for sure we're just saying that 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 term is often used to describe them yeah exactly so my question is do you need sellouts for progress because selling out means that they're getting in the door. They're getting yeah. into the party. They're getting onto that ladder and they're able to climb it. And that is progress because how does any, how can they even help or raise up anybody else if they're not already there? So yeah, you, it is a good point. And I do think that obviously, you know, marriage or, or getting with somebody who's in the party, in the club is a really great way to get in the club. Yeah. And I'm not saying that it doesn't work out sometimes where they, maybe that is the best person for you too. So right. there is like true love involved. But then there's also other incentives involved too, right? Exactly, exactly. So I guess uh, you guys let us know in the comments down below what you think about these assimilation questions. Like, is this what real power looks like in America, right? Political power, right? I would say because Hollywood has a lot of influence in how people feel or the public perception, but it doesn't have that much like political power unless it changes votes. Right. And right. then it's more roundabout because yeah. Hollywood will affect the minds and the minds theoretically, if they vote and they're eligible yeah. to vote, can change which politicians and the politicians dictate the policies. Exactly. My second question is like, what type of way of assimilation would you want to pick in America? If you could pick or redo your immigration, how would you want to assimilate? Because to, to gain any sort of power in this country or to make, sometimes it feels like to just even have a good life, you have to assimilate on some level. And then also, do you need sellouts for progress? You know, I always say this. In society, there's probably overall three rankings, right? And it's kind of like a pyramid because the distribution at the top is like the smallest, right? There's low, middle, and high. I would say that the majority of Asian American immigrants uh, want to either be live the middle class American dream, which is, you know, own one house, maybe two houses or just one house, two cars, have everything paid off, not have to worry about bills. Some uh, Asian Americans like the upper middle class version of that, which means your cars and your house, maybe you have two houses and they're just nicer, right? One's a rental property. But not that many Asians have that desire where they're like, it is my life stream to enter the halls of power. Many of who, the halls of which somebody who looks like me has never entered. But that is a whole nother ladder. You know what I mean? So it just really depends on your family. I think what makes you happy and also like, I guess what's your end goal, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, if you have an end goal in mind, right? I mean, yeah, if you want to be as powerful as possible, well, 
You gotta do what you can, right? <laughs> That's the, anyways, you got guys, a Wendy dang it. <laughs> yeah, let us know in the comments down below what you think about all this. Um, what do you think about Elaine Chow? If you know about her, like if you're more into politics even than we are, let us know if we, I don't think we got any details wrong, but let us know. Um, when she was on my team, she was Elaine, she was a fine secretary of transportation. When she turned on me, she turned into Coco, Coco Chow. From Coco Chow does sound like a movie character. But anyways, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching the Hot Pot Boys. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.